Good morning to all you Bible peeps and Jesus freaks out there. Let's do chapter 41, looks like, of Genesis. Remember, we left off with uh, Joseph interpreting dreams for the baker and the butler, and they came to pass. Now, the big chief's fixing to have some dreams, too. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river sail wept sail seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed and they fed in the meadow k-i-n-e kine that's pretty much cattle i think and behold seven other kine came up after them out of the river ill-favored and lean-fleshed and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine so pharaoh awoke and he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn this time came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So, and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. If you've read on through the Old Testament and you get to the book of Daniel, exact same thing. There's a lot of similarities between Daniel and Joseph, except in Daniel's day, the king is Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom's Babylon. Here it's Pharaoh and Egypt, and it's Joseph. But it, you'll see a lot of similarities. And uh, it says, Then spake the chief butler, Okay, remember that guy, the one that promised Joseph he would remember him when he got out and forgot all about him? God puts it back on his mind here. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me and ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. We told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved It'd be rough for me, wouldn't it take a while to get up to see Pharaoh? He shaved himself, it says, and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Got to clean up before you go before the king, I guess. Pharaoh says unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answers Pharaoh the same way Daniel does when we get to him. It's not in me. Amen. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It's all about the Lord, isn't it? Let's always remember that. No matter how how lifted up we get, let's always be humble and know where the where all the blessings come from. And Joseph does. He says, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood at the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat fleshed, well favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in the land of Egypt for badness. So they were rough lookers, huh? And the lean and ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them up. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning, so I awoke. So even though they ate them up, they were still just skin and bones and looked bad. And I saw in a dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. Amen. Still believe in dreams? I don't get much out of my dreams. I dream crazy stuff. But I probably had a, at least one, maybe two real meaningful ones. I'm quite certain came from God. And he probably still does that. Thank God. 
It says, uh, yeah, all right, where are we at? Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream, okay, he's about to show you what he's going to do. It says, the seven good kind are seven ears, the seven good ears are seven years. Seven good kind, seven years, seven good ears, seven years. Kind of hard to say. The dream is one. It's showing him the same thing. And the seven thin and ear-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. Famine. That's why when they ate up the good stuff, they were still skinny because it's a famine. And it says, This thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, which God is about to do, he shows unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after the seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine that follows, for it shall be very grievous. You see that in life a lot in the world anyway. When you're high on the hog and everything's going just right, and all of a sudden it just all falls apart. Next thing you know, you can't even remember how good it used to be because it's gotten so bad. That's what we're looking at here. Very grievous, it says. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Remember, it says in here, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, may everything be established. That's God's principle. It says, Now let, therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. The fifth part, that's 20%. That ain't bad. Look what we pay. You're going to get old US of A. It's a whole lot more than 20%. It? it says, Take up the fifth part in the years of plenty. So when it's all good, we're going we're gonna to take some and store it away. Let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine. It's a good, good rule of thumb, I guess. Save up. When you, when you know it's coming, I see people right today that if they think they've got enough beans stored up and batteries that this, everything's going to be all right, I'll just, I'll just keep on trusting the Lord to meet my needs like he says he will. Unless he was to give me a dream like this, then I, I would probably have to go get me some extra Vianney, I guess. Anyway, he says, And the food shall be for store against the seven years of fam with famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? How about that? Even these pagan people can see a godly man. They still can if they'll look. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Joseph started out with a coat of many colors, now he's getting a coat from Pharaoh. Isn't that something? You know, Joseph was raised up in his own house. He was raised up in the Potiphar's house. He was raised up in the prison house, and now he's being raised up in Pharaoh's house. Why? Because God was with him. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Paania. Zaphnath Paania. You get that in Daniel's day too. These pagans want to name them something, you know. That's part of their language. But that was his name, Zaphnath Paania. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up, gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, 
which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. Now here comes the hammer. And the seven years of dearth, famine, began to come, according as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all lands. Okay, it's not just in Egypt, it's everywhere. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he says to you do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was sore in all lands. And that's it for that, but it's sore in all lands, even the land of Canaan, back where Joseph's people are. That's a little prelude to what's about to happen. We'll see about it next time in chapter 42. God bless you till then. See ya.